What's going on, Jerome's? We are back. We are finally back at Graceland. It took two canceled flights, and we're, we're on 30 hours of no sleep because I, I don't really sleep on planes, but we are here. We're here, and I, I, I can't wait. Never leaving again. Anyways, why the Minnesota Fighting Vikings should consider going wide receiver in the first round? Because now that the Vikings have checked the box in terms of uh, adding some cornerback help and bringing back Patrick Peterson, uh, as well as uh, cinching up the offensive line to a degree, to a degree with Jesse Davis as well as Chris Reed, the Vikings have truly freed themselves up to go BPA at the top of the 2022 NFL draft, which is all you want. Because you don't want to go into the draft just telegraphing every other team in the league ahead of you and behind you, potentially jumping in front of you, that you're going to take position X. Like if the Vikings didn't do anything in free agency for O-line or cornerbacks, like, oh, they're going to go Stingley, Sauce, McDuffie, Booth, or Linderbaum, whatever. So whatever. So now the Vikings... <clears throat> have truly freed themselves up to really expand the space at, at number 12 and potentially a trade downs as well. And I understand you're like, well, why would the Vikings even consider drafting a wide receiver? Cause you have Justin freaking Jefferson, you have Adam Thielen, you got KJ, you got ISM, you got BC coming back. Why would you do that? Well, it all harkens back to the 1998 NFL draft. Why would the Vikings consider drafting Randy Moss out of Marshall University, go thundering herd, when they had 1,000-yard receiver future Hall of Famer in Chris Carter, as well as 1,000-yard receiver in Jake Reed? Uh, and this is back in the day where a three-deep wasn't really a thing, but the Vikings made it a thing because you don't pass up on talent just because you have a surplus, right? So, also, look at the Vikings receiver room. Jefferson, he is going to be that dude. Like, Justin Jefferson is going to be that guy who puts up the Cooper Cup triple crown. Uh, the, the architect. Yes. Screw you, Sean McVay, you, you little Ed Sheeran lookalike. Hey, Kevin O'Connell, the guy who helped design the offense where Cooper Cup led the league in receptions and yards and touchdowns. Jeff Jefferson is going to get all that smoke now. Woo. Come on, man. Also, you got Adam Thielen. Respect. They paid him. He's, he is going to turn 32 in August. But I do think that adding a wide receiver option, even though I, I love me some K.J. Osborne, he's kind of a wide receiver two and a half. He's a above he's way above average wide receiver three. I don't know if he's ready to be a true blue wide receiver two yet. I believe in his talent, though. Also, ISM wasn't used too much as a rookie. Showed some flashes towards the end. Love that speed. And then the rest of them, sure. But... If the Vikings do take a first-round wide receiver or even a second-round wide receiver, what you can do is you can take a, a couple snaps off of Adam Thielen's plate, keep those legs fresher later into the season, let him work more from the slot as opposed to the outside against press uh, so he's able to get those matchups on the inside, really work the middle of the field, a la late career Larry Fitzgerald. I think that you can do that. And look at, at the wide receivers. So this is uh, CBS wide receiver rankings, not mine. Uh, I think that there's... I think there's a good chance that five wide receivers are taken in the first round. Uh, Garrett Wilson, Jameson Williams, Drake London, Traylon Burks, as well as Chris Olave from The Ohio State University. And then you do have a, a nice strata of borderline first-round guys. Maybe they sneak their way in or at least a high-end second-round picks. And John Dotson from Penn State, who – at times, single-handedly took over games. I, I loved his tape from uh, from the Nittany Lions. George Pickens from Georgia, I think, is really getting overlooked, mainly because of... So, it's not a devastatingly top-end wide receiver class, but it is deep and is fantastic. And I think Pickens just get lost in the mix. Christian Watson... Of course, the physical freak, um, you know, six five and change, uh, had himself a great senior bowl, had himself a great combine. So I think that he, it, there was even some steam that he might sneak into the first round. I don't see it. Maybe he's there for the Vikings at forty six. Who knows? Uh, David Bell, Sky Moore, John Michi, Wandale, of course. So uh, Calvin Austin the third a little bit later on. Maybe you get him in the third round. I don't know. But we're focusing on the first round. So why would the Vikings do this? Because BPA is BPA. And also, uh, you know, Thielen is starting to age out. So having Jefferson and a true blue running mate for the long term, as well as a little KJ sprinkled in there and some ISM, baby, you got a stew going. And the Vikings over the last couple of years under Zimmer and his various offensive coordinators, uh, notably the Kubiaks, have been either bottom of the league or near the bottom in terms of 11 personnel usage. So one running back, one tight end, three wide receivers. And and the, the Rams were uh, up near the league lead. So I think that that is going to reflect in personnel with Kevin O'Connell, and it would make a lot of sense, especially the Vikings are sitting in an interesting spot at 12, where 
Maybe one wide receiver is off the board. I doubt two. Maybe uh, all the wide receivers are there. So the Vikings at 12, they certainly could stick and pick and take their guy. Garrett Wilson, G-Dub, is a guy who's... So I still think that Traylon Burks is one, wide receiver 1A. I just think that he has a dogged determination in his game. I think there's a lot of A.J. Brown to him. But obviously he didn't test as good as these physical freaks. But uh, Traylon Burks is just that guy. Uh, for me... It is G-Dub, Drake London, Traylon Burks, Jamison Williams slightly below because of the ACL, except that's not that big of a deal. And then Olave is at number five. But uh, Garrett Wilson, Garrett Wilson reminds me of Stephon Diggs. Uh, he, he does. Where a little bit undersized, you know, six foot, a buck 85, just like Diggs, but he can get open in a phone booth. Also has that great speed, great hands uh, away from the body. So I, hmm. like, if Garrett, I, if there's a wide receiver taken ahead of the Vikings in the first 11 picks, I do think it is going to be Garrett Wilson. So if he's off the board, so be it. But if he's there at 12, the Vikings certainly could have a decision. Jamison, now this would be interesting. This would go a little bit against the grain of the Vikings being all in on 2022. But, you know, rookie wide receivers coming into the league and contributing right away, ah, ah. I mean, Justin Jefferson didn't even start until the third game of his rookie year. Uh, but Jameson Williams, I think that he could be back towards the end of the season, pending on how his ACL rehab goes. Uh, there's video of him running and working out, which is great to see. Uh, so maybe he starts on the pup. Maybe he comes back midseason. But if he didn't tear his ACL in the, in the natty, he would be wide receiver one. And I think that he would be a lock to be a top 10 pick. But you know that ACL just sets him back just a little bit. Ah, hell. It, it, four wide receiver ones. So those four and then Olave is five. A Drake London, the power forward coming out of USC, literally a basketball player. He played on the college team for a hot second. And Kirk needs a tall receiver. But Drake London, he's got the wingspan like a condor, can go up and get a contested catch guru. I think that he is fantastic. And I, so – what happens is, with a lot of larger wide receivers is that if they, they're really good in contested catch spots, that means they're not getting open. No, not, not necessarily. I, I don't think that that is the case with Drake London. And frankly, if the Vikings just uh, sticked and picked Drake London at 12, I mean, you could do a lot worse. Traylon Burks, my love, is, is definitely noted. But the Vikings, what's interesting is it, it's really hard to peg where these wide receivers are going to go. Like, like I said, I, I think it would be... It would be shocking if two uh, two wide receivers go in the top 11 picks ahead of the Vikings. But even in a trade-down spot, the Vikings still may have their choice. Uh, if they trade down with the Steelers, which has been talked about, we'll, we'll uh, get into that in a later video. You know, Dropping from uh, 12 to 20, you know, maybe three wide receivers are off the board. Maybe four. Maybe they'll still have a choice. Maybe they can go to plan B and hit, hit them up in the second round. I don't know. I don't know. But it... it it's not as crazy as it thinks, you know. Given the way that the roster is uh, is uh, composed as of right now, and the way that Kevin O'Connell wants to move to more three wide receiver looks, and also Jefferson and rookie wide receiver TBD, Batman, Batman, KJ is Robin, and then ISM is I don't know. Well, no, Thielen would be Alfred, and then ISM would be Nightwing. I guess that's a little bit deep into the DC universe, but yeah, that's whatever there. But yeah. Have an open mind. Uh, this is the beauty uh, of the Vikings really suturing things up in free agency at positions of need because you can go full-on BPA, baby, uh, no matter where you draft. Stick and pick, trade up, trade down, do not care at all. Just take the best player. And if it's a wide receiver, baby, we got Stu going. What we do? And, th and then there's no excuse for Kirk Cousins. That, that is all. Uh, anyways, your thoughts on our thoughts. Should the Vikings go wide receiver in round one? Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.